Okay, go ahead and click on the presentation. There you go. Okay, David. <clears throat> Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Mike. Okay. Good evening. And welcome to another lecture given by the Institute of Design Metaphysical Research Incorporated. First of all, this is a school and not a church. And we're not associated with any church organizations, Jehovah's Witnesses, or any of the denominations you have taught in the world today. This school was founded in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kennelly, who was given a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. The charts that you see pictorially illustrated are the results of the divine vision and revelation. We have branch schools operating throughout the United States and also throughout various parts of the world. I will be expanding the names that you see. Yahweh is the true and correct original name of our heavenly father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have this cloud extending all the way around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud, just as everything that exists, exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is the ultimate source and substance, limits and bounds of everything that exists. Now when your translators have come across the true and correct original name of our heavenly father Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh now taking on a, Yahweh now taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself is known as Elohim. Now superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, he could only be seen through divine visions and revelations. As stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10, then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators have come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in a shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim now manifested in a physical body as the savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. As stated in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct original Hebrew name of our savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as a father, Yahweh taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself as the word of son as Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the savior of the world as Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7, for they are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now a mind investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title that we teach here are true and correct. But the names and titles that you've been taught out in the world today are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and has never been in any part of the Hebrew language. And it did not come into existence into any language 
prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and correct original name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. Our aims. The primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as it really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without a distinction of race, creed, nationality, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, a so-called law of nature and power of latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern practical and occult sciences. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery, the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered to the sons of children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved saving in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And ten, ten inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. I will watch for this peace, and I will slogan to speak the truth. We have a prayer by Dr. Miranda Gonzalez, a uh, scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. The scripture lesson will be Hebrews 11, chapter. Let us bow our heart and our mind for prayer. Our most gracious, eternal, heavenly Father, Yahweh. We are indeed thankful, grateful for another opportunity that you are allowing the sons to gather together in this manner. We are thankful that you have more so gathered us together in our consciousness, in our heart, in our mind to come on into uh, the sanctuary. We are thankful that you have allowed us this opportunity to gather together. We're thankful for your long suffering, your mercy, your grace in this last day and time and for revealing unto us this divine vision and revelation and giving us the understanding of who we are even in this state and condition. We're thankful for all the hearts that you have moved to be on this call. And we ask you tonight as always to steal our heart and our mind, give us those things that we need on an individual basis to elevate us into total consciousness of your ever presence. These and all blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Scripture lesson for this evening is Hebrews 11th chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, Hebrews 11th chapter. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, 
by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Yahweh testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, in it was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because Yahweh had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased Yahweh. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by Yahweh of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is Yahweh. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore, Yahweh is not ashamed to be called their Elohim, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that Yahweh was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was he at three months by his parents, because they saw he was a promising child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of the Messiah greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover, and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians attempting to do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down 
after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the hostess Rahab perished not with them that were disobedient when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel markings and scourges, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Yahweh having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Hebrews 11th chapter. Hallelujah. All right, for tonight's um, class, we're going to have open testimony. So the floor will be open to anybody who wants to give a testimony that has joined us tonight. Um, you have a 10 minute time limit. Once that 10 minutes is up, you'll have another five minutes to um, complete your thoughts and conclude your um, testimony. So with that being said, the floor is open. I'll give a testimony. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Good evening, brethren. I, just like to start, I would just like to start out and say thank you, my Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahshua, for allowing me and all my brethren to see another day so that we can learn something about your divine purpose, pattern, and plan of salvation. And I just want to say that Hebrew, the 12th, the 11th chapter, that's my favorite chapter right there, Hebrew. I love it because faith is something that we really do need. And sometimes we think we don't have it. But in actually, we do have it because if we believe in Yahshua, that he died, that he buried, and that he resurrected, then we do have faith. And don't let that devil take that away from you because sometimes he can't come at you and take it away, try to take your faith away from you. But we do, and we really believe in our heart that Yahshua died buried and resurrect and rose again and resurrect a quickening spirit, then we do have faith. Because I know he tried to come at me like that. But he called our name out of the world. That is so very important. He called all our names. We are the marvelous just at that. Out of all these uh, billions of people on the world, he called your name. And I am just grateful and I appreciate what he has done for me in my life, whether I understood some of it or whether I got upset and didn't understand things. Or, and still, I am still learning. Even though I've been in class a very long time, it does not matter. You can always learn something new, especially going through that, uh, through this uh, pattern and plan of salvation chart. You can always learn something new. I don't care how long you've been in class. I always see something different that he showed me. And for that, I am very grateful. And we all should be very grateful, especially the time that we are living in now with all this turmoil 
and everything that's going on. And he's keeping us and he's holding us. And I know I am very grateful to Yahshua. Because without him, I don't know where I'll be at. And I just wanted to give that. That was just a personal testimony that I wanted to give. Because I know in my heart that Yahshua is real. And I'm not going to let no devil in hell take that away from me. Because I know he's my savior. Always remember that, my brethren. That no matter what you go through, Yahshua is your savior. And he will always be there for us. He said, I'll be with you even until the end of the world. So he's going to be with us right up to the end. And when we take off this flesh, we all going to have that glorified body together with him. And all we want to hear him say is, come home, my son, my faithful servant, and be with him in peace, joy, and happiness. And like I got said, that 12th chapter, that's a very powerful chapter. Because those people back there in the Hebrew, the 12th chapter, they had faith. I mean, the things they went through, we couldn't even imagine going through those things. And, and most of it was unto them. So we have to be grateful and thankful that all he asks us to do now is sit our butt down somewhere and get something learned and pay attention. That's all. No money. Just pay attention. And once he starts working with you and showing you things, you gonna know. You don't know when it first happened, but you gonna know and you gonna recognize the spirit, even speaking through different vessels, that that's him. That's not the vessels. That's Yahshua. And we have to be able to recognize that and to discern when he's speaking and when he's not speaking. And I just want to thank the father through his son, Yahshua, this day for everything he has done for me and my family and all the brethren all over, even the one that don't know me, they still my brother and I love them all. So I just want to say thank you, Yahshua. Thank you, thank you. Words can even express how much gratitude I have in my heart. So with these brother and many other blessings, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Who's next? Okay, uh, this is Shirley. Um, I'm thankful. I enjoy what the previous speaker had to say. Um, the Holy Spirit expressing the truth of the matter about being thankful and having faith in Yahweh. Uh, and as the scripture lesson stated, as we were being read, I was looking at all the names that were being mentioned in each verse about having faith in Yahweh. And the thought came to me, well, you know, my, where, would, where would my name fit in there? You know, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Jacob, by faith, Moses, and Yahweh immediately um, made me see that um, it was just by believing in him, just having faith in him, because it says by faith in it was translated that he should not see death and was not found because Yahweh had translated him. And the definition of translate is to move from heaven, from earth to heaven without seeing a physical death. So our names are already in the places of all of these that were mentioned here. You know, when we talk about Abraham, we got to be talking about us, you know, because it's the same spirit, it's the same truth. Uh, there's a song by Patty LaBelle said, when you talk about love, you got to be talking about me. So when you talk about Yahweh, when you talk about any of those who his spirit was manifested in to show forth his, to carry out his purpose, then uh, the, no matter what name he tags on it, it's still talking about Yahweh. So um, I, I like that scripture lesson where it's pointed out because uh, without faith, it's impossible to please him. If you have faith in Yahweh, then your name can fit there with all of the others, all down to the age and dispensations that had faith in Yahweh. And uh, I'm so thankful, as the previous speaker said, the words really 
don't give any justice to expressing how thankful we, we are. And in the times that we are in now, we are so ever thankful because, and I look at this every day, John 5, 19, where it says, uh, 1 John 5, 19, that we know that we are of Yahweh and the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the son of Yahweh is come because he had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and that we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. I think I quoted all of that right. But um, that's what we have to be thankful for, that Yahweh has given us an understanding so we can see, sit back and watch the show and understand that it's Yahweh's purpose being carried out. We're not swayed and we're not, uh, uh, um, we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not fearful, you know, for our lives. We're not uh, stressed out because of what's going on because Yahweh has given us an understanding that we may know him. And when we know him, we know his purpose and his plan because he came and made himself known unto us. So that we'll know that he is the one that's carrying out his purpose. Just like back there, uh, just like with the children of Israel, he had to come and make himself known unto them, give his name unto them, so they would know who it is they are to worship. Then he went on to show forth his power, his works, his mighty works, so they would know that it was him. And that's what he's been doing all down through the ages and dispensations through showing forth his power to that he is the only one that is to be glorified or to be or to take credit for anything. So that's what we have to be thankful for, that we have an understanding of Yahweh and his purpose. It was a blessed day for each and every one of us when Yahweh introduced himself unto us as the creator of heaven and earth, as the archetype or vision or pattern of the universe uh, in which all things abide within. Um, there is no reason for any of us to have a reason to not to be thankful. Every day there is something we can find to gripe and complain and murmur, or murmur about if we just wanted to find something. But when we stop and be thankful that Yahweh has given us an understanding and that this is his purpose, then we can just walk it. We can be circumspect, I mean watchful, uh, um, using wisdom, making sound decisions, that's walking in his purpose, uh, just, uh, or just living it because we know that it's him in us willing and doing of his good pleasure and to be conscious of that is the blessing um and when i speak of uh as first john 5 19 it said the whole world lies in wickedness now when you say that some may think that you're just calling everybody wicked from the from the uh concept of what they think wickedness is but in 2 Thessalonians, he said, Yahweh is going to take faint, flaming vengeance on those that know not him. So that's what makes one wicked, is they do not know Yahweh. To know Yahweh in, first, in John 17th chapter is eternal life. So um, the whole world does lie in wickedness. And the world is made, is, is, is the thoughts and of the man's heart. That's what makes up the world in a man. Ecclesiastes third chapter tells us that's where he placed the world. So to where we are right now, Yahweh has gathered all of his sons and is still gathering his sons into the land of Goshen where we can just sit still and watch the show. Uh, we were talking the other day and uh, I mentioned to Carly that I've, all, I've often had the thoughts as to what were what, what was Israel doing 
in Goshen, over in the land of Goshen, what were they doing when Yahweh was carrying out, you know, all of his, uh, the plagues, pouring out the plagues up in Egypt? And so all I have to do is, because this is a, his purpose is a constant repeat over and over again. So all we have to do is look at where does he have us now? All of us are in our houses, in our own houses, and, um, and we're in the land of Goshen. I'm talking about psychologically, spiritually. So as far as the land of Goshen, we're in our physical houses, which really we're talking about the spiritual houses, but as a type. But then even he's got all us secluded in these physical houses where we just got to be still. And then we find ourselves in our state of consciousness in the land of Goshen, just being still. So what they were doing is what we're doing now. The sons are doing now is sitting back, watching what Yah, see what Yahweh is doing. He is destroying the world. That's what they saw was going on down there in Egypt. Yahweh was devastating Egypt. Because what, why, what time was it? It was time for his children to come up out of there. As he had promised to Abraham, he was fulfilling his promise. So they had to sit and watch. And that's what our job is right now, is to sit and watch Yahweh deliver his sons up out of this world. That's why he said, and that's, that's uh, taking care of that matter where he says, come out of her, my people. And that's what we're doing right now. He's bringing us up out of it. Our loins should be girded up, our shoes on our feet, and a rod in our hand, and to, uh, be ready to get up out of here because that's exactly what's doing. If you look at it all the way down to Asian dispensations, um, every time he took his uh, children, his people down into bondage, We'll just use that. The children of Israel, then when he took them down in Babylon um, under Nebuchadnezzar, that was not their permanent abode. It's never been the man's permanent abode from the first time he created man as far as in this world. So uh, being a sojourner, you know, we are designed a better country as a Hebrew stated, scripture lesson stated, because we were sojourners. And sojourners mean that's before Yahweh came and made us know, uh, showed us the better country or our true home. Sojourner means uh, a temporary stay or to live temporarily. So we're just sojourning down here on this earth plane or in this world, on this earth plane. Uh, but our state of consciousness, that's how we come up out of it. That's the better country that we see. And that's the better country that we're striving to get to, where we have a sound mind, where we are grounded, rooted, grounded, and settled, knowing who we are, what our purpose is. And when we come to know that, then it's going to get rid of what we thought our purpose was in this world. You know, we had a purpose, we had our hopes and dreams and desires and to be this and do this and all this, but we're going to come to the, uh, the true country, uh, the better country that he had promised us, where we can be grounded and settled, and that is in peace, joy, and happiness. That is in heaven. You can be in heaven right now but you have to die to go to heaven. We're talking about your, your consciousness, your state of consciousness has to change. You have to be elevated to a different state of consciousness where as the founding, I'm quoting, uh, part of quoting what the founder said in that you have to die to go to heaven where you, won't, you don't live here anymore. I'm talking about consciously so. so but having faith in Yahweh is how we get there. Having faith in him, because that's what stabilizes us. That's what keeps us rooted and grounded and settled. No matter what he has going on, it's for us to sit still and be still and know who we are. And I'm thankful for um, whatever Yahweh takes me through. 
whatever it takes for me to reach that um, to reach that better country, to be settled there, to be comfortable there. You know, like you move to a new city, it takes you a while to get settled in. Well, that's what I'm striving for, to be totally comfortable. I'm, I, my prayer is every day to make me stop complaining and grumbling or murmuring about anything because we have so much to be thankful for. So I hope that something's been said to stir up um, all of our hearts to, to want to stay focused on Yahweh at all times. And in order to do that, you have to, you have to be still and know that that's who you are, that you can be nothing else. And to find that out is we're going to have to be obedient and search these things out that he has given us to prove these things to us. And I thank you and um, may Yahweh continue to bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is Vanessa, and I have enjoyed the um, things um, spoken by the previous speakers, for it truly is Yahweh that hath called us into this great gospel and revealed himself unto us. And as was being stated, you know, you do have to die to go to heaven, we have to die out of who we thought we were or what we thought we knew and all everything that pertained to the world. And as was gotten off into, I don't know if it was doing the transcript reading the other day or if it was the basic foundation um, last night, but uh, Yahweh was clearly um, letting us know that it's him, and he has given us everything it is that we have come to know of him. Like when the days of the week was broken down and Yahweh was showing us how that they just overlapped each other, overlapped each other. Those are the things that <clears throat> Yahweh from the beginning um, told us that it was line upon line, precept upon precept. It's the simple, basic things. It's taking the natural things to understand Yahweh and his supernal nature, because this ain't about us at all. This is not about us at all. And when he said he placed the world in the man's heart so <clears throat> that he could not see those things that Elohim did from the beginning to the end. So, but he also said through the Messiah that no man knew the Father save the Son, neither know any man the Son save the Father, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So it takes Yahweh to give us those things. Now I'm going to read this scripture in Isaiah 5th chapter. He said, now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out all the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he hoped that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, and now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be burned up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. So when Yahweh is preaching this gospel, and you read over there in, uh, I think it's Matthew 15th chapter, where the Messiah said that um, his he is the vine and his father is the husband man. So 
back in when he when Yahweh made the promise to Abraham, he told Abraham that he would give him a seed and that he would multiply that seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven, that he would be a he would make that seed to grow and to multiply. But Abraham was to be a father of a multitude, and Yahweh would bless both nations, the Jews and the Gentiles. So you see, he's planting that vineyard. And now, when we look at it from a spiritual standpoint, that planting is preaching the gospel. And if you can receive the things of Yahweh and not mix it with your concepts, your thoughts, your ideas and opinions, because that is that that grew up in there with what Yahweh had planted, what he has given us, because he has given us of himself. He said, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. So here we are down here now, and all of this is going on in the world, and it takes you back to Isaiah 8 and 19, where they're going to look upward for help, and they're going to start to curse their kings and their gods. Why so? Because they have not received the things that Yahweh have said. Now, when Dr. Kinley did those three peace missions, that put this gospel throughout all the world, but they did not believe and receive it. They held on to false and erroneous doctrines. And last week, we were reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible, where it is so vitally important that you know the name of your creator. And one of the speakers gave the example, you know, like if you're, if the name is not important, then if you're working and you get a check, even if you're getting that monthly check and it comes to you in somebody else's name, there's nothing you can do with it. So the name is important. Yahweh said he was jealous of his name. He said, do not take away his name to bring it to naught. So you can't just say anything will do, Lord will do, God will do, Jehovah will do, any of that, because it does not. It does not even closely measure up to who Yahweh is. You know, reading that scripture lesson, when all of those men went through the um trials and uh, scourges that they had to go through. They made it through by faith. And that's how we're going to have to make it through. Anything that we have to go through is on your faith. But if your faith is not rooted and grounded in Yahweh or in the truth, then you have set yourself up on a rocky foundation. And Paul talks about that you not have no other foundation than that one which has already been laid. He said, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which has already been preached, then you let him be a curse. So then if you know, and Yahweh did not give us no blind faith, he said, if you just have the faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, then you can move mountains. So you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I know that there's not anybody that's on this call that have not faced the Red Sea and Yahweh tunneled it up and caused you to go through on dry ground. And, and look, and I use that for an example because that's how he brought Israel out. And he said, remember the former things of old, for I am El and there is none else. So when you come upon whatever situation, circumstance, whatever it is, and you feel like you ain't got no way out, Look, what, what, what did Israel do? They cried unto Moses. What did Yahshua say to Moses? What's that in your hand? You hold it up, Moses. So if you have received anything that you know for a certainty is true concerning Yahweh, you better hold it up because that is your way out. Yahweh is your way out. He, and he said he is not the author of confusion. So see, you ain't going to be confused about what Yahweh has presented unto you. 
Yahweh has come unto us down here in this day and time. And he has shown us of himself. All we have to do is receive it. He said over there in John, the first chapter, for as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons. And that's the only way you can become a son is that you just receive the very presence of Yahweh right there within you. You receive that Holy Spirit that he poured out. He didn't pour it out. He said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of Yahweh, and you are not your own. So you are not your own. It's not your purpose. It's not your plan. It's that that Yahweh set up from the very beginning. And that is to show us that he is all that there is. He showed how he manifested. I came down and walked around on this earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah. Gave up that life so that we could have life. So now all we got to do is accept and receive it. You can't allow that satanic spirit to come in and draw you out at this last day and time. Because we are at the end of this thing. And it's going to take a true knowledge and understanding of Yahweh to get us on over. Now, Romans <clears throat> 1, and, um, 1 and 21, because we, we always start and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. But then we get down to, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. But that next verse when Yahweh say so that they are without excuse because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible Elohim into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, Yahweh also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So when they knew Yahweh, they didn't glorify Yahweh. They wanted to take some glory for themselves. That's not how Yahweh told us to worship him. That's not what he gave unto us. For he it was that came down and manifested as Yahshua the Messiah. So all I'm saying is have faith in Yahweh and make sure that it is rooted and grounded in the truth. For it is wisdom and knowledge that shall be the stability of the times and strength of salvation. For we're looking at Yahweh. Take this thing out. Now, I hope you've gotten something out of what was said, and I thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. evening. Y'all can hear me? Yes, ma'am. This is Janie. <laughs> Good evening to everybody. I would like, just like to say I have, I have really enjoyed the previous speaker in and, and I love this chapter two, Hebrew 11 chapter, because without faith, we wouldn't have nothing to, to go on. So we have to have faith. That we need faith, this special at a time like it is, all this going on, the coronavirus. But I know that <clears throat> nobody can, no care how, how much they said that they what they, you know, uh, talk about what it, what it's going to do, what they don't know either. But I know one thing that can't, can't anybody do anything but Yahweh because he the ones put it here and he the ones have to take it out. And so then by faith, uh, we didn't have faith, You, it wouldn't be anything that we could, uh, you know, have nothing to go up on. Because by, by faith, you have to, uh, without faith, it's impossible for you to please him. And, and we just have to have faith in Yahweh that everything would be all right. And it is going to be all right. 
either way it goes. And I just have enjoyed all the speakers, and I really have been enjoying the um, the scripture that we've been having to go through. I have been learning a lot about, you know, different scriptures over there. The I think it was twenty chapter twenty one we had about the slaves. You know how they had to they had to do all those things back then because you know they was going by the Bible. And 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 and, and that, uh, like we was in bondage in things that we we had to we thought we have to do, but Yahweh brought us from all of that. So we just thankful for everything. And I just want to say I just enjoyed everything, and still is, and I'm still learning about you know different scriptures and. I'm just thankful to Yahweh that He gave me the, gave me this gift, and that's all I have to say. Hallelujah! All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Charmaine. Hey. This is Charmaine. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, one of the things that Yahweh has had on my mind, and I enjoyed the things that the previous speakers have stated, um, Yahweh has be really been um, focusing me on the change that has to take place in our consciousness. Um, we're moving from a carnal and natural state of mind to a spiritual mind. That's what this migration is about. And um, the world is saying that they're waiting for Jesus to come back. But as uh, was stated through Shirley, we know that he has already come. Um, and I wanted to read an excerpt out of the first national convention. I heard a voice from heaven and the sign will follow. And um, it's not, this was starts on page 20 is the, what I'm reading from. And it says, Every spirit that testifies that Yahshua is come, he is come. And I'm telling you, that's what's in me. Now, that's Dr. Kinley talking. Now, you try, you try the spirit. You know that I can't do nothing. He was the faith healer, talking about Yahshua. He was that prophet that Moses said should come. That's what it is in me. He is come. And I'm not standing out there looking up in the sky like a stoop looking for him to jump out of the clouds. Every spirit that testifies that he is come when I went to school is present tense. Is is present tense. Is come in the flesh. That is to say, I'm walking around here in a physical body, and so are you. And every last one of you got him in your heart. And he's a quickening spirit. And he is come. And you walking around here talking about the Holy Ghost. And you don't know no more about the Holy Ghost than a hog does about dentistry. And standing around here in the pulpit, preaching to somebody and yet and still you talking about when I got the Holy Ghost God stopped me from chewing tobacco smoking cigarettes that's all the devil knows telling people what not to eat no pork and all that kind of stuff just plain don't care he don't care when I got saved he stopped me the Holy Ghost stopped me from drinking. It's a wonder he wouldn't stop someone from lying. Now I'm giving it to you straight. I know it sounds funny. Listen, I'll drink what I want to drink and eat what I please. And it's my business. If I got the Holy Spirit in me, it will control me, govern me. So I don't get out 
of court, out of control, just like the sun, moon, and the stars, every physical object, and they don't get out of control. Why? Because they are controlled by universal spirit law. And that's what it is in here that controls this. I know when I get got enough to eat and I know when I want to eat and it ain't none of your business. If it don't make me sick, it ought not to bother you. That's all these preachers is doing is running around here talking about abstaining from something or other. He's got sanctified and all them different kind of things. He's saved now in this plain old caf cafeteria. He calls that sanctification. Don't set him apart from all them physical things. But listen, you can see a bottle of whiskey talking about somebody. Let me skip down. Thanks. Now, Paul was telling you, ain't that what he says, that all these carnal and natural things in the kingdom of Israel, spiritually, they pointed to the spirit. The natural was moved out of the way. And the Messiah was not a natural man walking around, but he's a quickening spirit. And he is come in your heart and in, my, in your mind. And you mm. are in the kingdom translated us so says the apostle paul in thessalonians said he translated us into the kingdom of yahshua his dear son and you standing around talking about beloved try whether they are of god and here this man standing is standing up here drinking this grape juice and talking about it being a type and a shadow well, nobody back here, everybody eating and drinking, they didn't have the Holy Spirit and they never kept the law. And he sees looking at that physical and natural, just like he's expecting him to jump down out of the clouds. The mystery of iniquity, Satan transformed into an angel of light, the doctor of divinity. Well, nobody back here. Okay, um, and I'm go down so I can get done, but he's talking about uh, water baptism now. He's saying, look, water baptism was a type of a death and a burial, and therefore John had to baptize him before he was crucified in order to baptize him into his death. The sixth chapter of Romans and begin back at the first verse, baptized that they might be typified, baptized into his death that they might resurrect with him. And now, and now you can't go around preaching that the Messiah resurrected from the dead. What's the matter with you? Then you wanna baptize somebody into his death. We preach that he resurrected and ascended and went back to heaven. And now he's come to you in the form of the Holy Spirit which was poured out about nine o'clock in the morning, AD June 6th, day of June in 33. Um, let's go to something. And they stand around talking about the natural things. Jerusalem above is the mother of us all. That's natural, physical, but we are born of the spirit. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And listen, every sin that the man committeth is without the body to see what's in your heart and in your mind. There's, there ain't nothing in that pork you're eating and you should, and should you happen to eat too much or overdose, listen, who pays the bill? You're paying the bill. It ain't bothering me if you didn't know. So got all this carnality all mixed up with spirituality. Every spirit that testifies that Yahshua the Messiah is come is of Yahweh. So I, I just wanted to read that because that was um, going on into the transcript that we read Wednesday, but how that Yahshua in you 
that's your hope of glory. And he is, him in you is how you overcome. He said that the Messiah or the Holy Spirit in you is the power to overcome all ills in every respect. So you have to know that you have that power in you right now. You're not waiting for it to come. It's there. You just have to use it, acknowledge it. And whatever you need, he's present with you to, to, to give you everything you need. I mean, well, it's already there, but it's a matter of being exercised and, and, and using that that he has given you to overcome whatever it is that um, you need to. So I hope someone's gotten something out of what I said and thank you. Hallelujah. Before the next speaker, I want to say this real quick. Um, the moderator had to unmute everybody just so the people who dialed in will be able to have a chance to speak. But if I can get you guys to mute yourselves out if you're not speaking, um, because you have been unmuted by the moderator. Because um, I think somebody was had a background noise going on and I don't think they realized it. So if everybody can mute themselves out if you're not speaking. Um, and the next speaker, you can go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. Hi. Hi, good evening. Hi, it's Janine. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say a couple of things uh, that have, you know, this is such a journey. It's a beautiful journey. It's a powerful journey. Um, but Carla, before I go on, can you tell me, um, am I coming across too loud? Because I know I've heard somebody say that to me before, or is it okay? No, you're just fine. Okay, thank you. So the one thing that I just wanted to uh, share briefly, this idea about faith and having faith, you know, so, it's so much more than just a word, you know, um, and, and one of the things I always say is that, and one of the things our dean used to say is that the teaching takes practice. You really got to put it to work to see how it can work for you. And so that whole notion idea about faith you know, to have faith in Yahweh, the question that I ask myself is, what does that really mean? And <laughs> apparently I'm learning because it's been, because I asked Yahweh that question, he has been providing all kinds of what I would call excellent uh, um, antidotes or excellent opportunities to show and prove how, how faith works. What does that really look like? So, you know, you, instead of leaning to your own understanding about things, looking at how we turn aside, looking at how we um, let it go. And I was talking to Shirley about this last weekend is that, you know, you do have to ask yourself, have I done my best with a particular situation or circumstances? Have I done my best? You know, because the thing about it with Yahweh, so you just can't come to him in the old way. You can't come bringing your phony ass, I mean, phony self <laughs> to the table. You just can't do that. And then the other thing is, is that he's not interested in your concepts and ideas and opinions. He's interested in you coming to him humble like a child, like a child that truly, truly, truly wants to know. And then he'll show you. And sometimes those examples that he uh, gives you, they're painful, but the next day the sun shines so bright and you're so thankful. So um, I went back and I listened to the lecture from last Friday. And the thing about it is, is if we're not detaching ourselves from this world and the things they're in, something's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because how can we want the, what's in the world? It's just, it's so, it's just so non-appetizing. <laughs> you know, it's just like, there's nothing to be desired that have to do with Yahweh's fruits of the spirit. And the other thing I want to mention too, I always have gone back to the attributes. The attributes are so important because I had asked that question you know, what is that like? What does it feel like, you know, knowing, knowing, truly knowing? See, this is the same thing about faith. It's not just a word. And these attributes, they are not just words either. They are actionable. And they are, <laughs> I, don't know how, I mean, it's like 
These are, these are Yahweh's master tools. And so that they're working in you. And when you're honest and when you're fair and when you allow that, um, you know, resist that adversary and he'll flee from you. See, that's a, that's, that's a, uh, that's a, that's a, 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 a process and it's a practice and it's something that you'll get better at. And as you get better at it, then there's that measure that you're growing stronger and that that's in the world, that, that world that's in you is becoming less and less. And I've said this and I'll say it again. It has to be that way. Yahshua has to teach us through a process because we're just, you know, we've been so misused and so abused by the world. Our souls have truly been misused and abused. So it is a process learning faith and what that really looks like and challenging it, challenging it. And more importantly, and most importantly, knowing that you have direct access. I think about that song by the emotions that says, don't ask my neighbors, come to me. That's what we got to do. We got to come to Yahweh direct. And he's pleased with that. So I just wanted to share that and just say, I'm, um, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just learning, you know, this whole Zoom thing. I had that looked up once before and uh, it means to move rapidly. So we are on the move. We are on the move. And the sons that are, uh, you know, um, yearning for the tr true, true, we've already had the milk, but now we're into the meat. And that's where we are. The reality is really sinking in. And I just want to say I'm really grateful. I'm happy to be here. With that, I'll say hallelujah. 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 Um, this is David. And uh, <clears throat> I was, uh, I've been very, very uh, elated and happy to hear all of the testimonies that have gone on before. And Yahweh has me here sitting, listening. And the first question he asked me was, uh, uh, was what is faith? And uh, we read that chapter and as the previous speaker just said, and I, I know it was time for me to speak up. It's almost like that, uh, the, the temple, uh, if everybody can, can uh, remember what happened with the temple when the stones were just put in place. It's the same way that's going on with this more great and perfect tabernacle in our speech, if you will. When we speak, we're speaking according to the oracle that Yahweh has set up because it is not the man doing the work, doing anything. It is Yahweh working out his own purpose to perfection. And that perfection is what we've come to know. But uh, getting back to the faith, see faith is an attribute also of Yahweh. And uh, when you consider from uh, Miss Dorothy's uh, testimony there from the very beginning to uh, even up to where we are at this point. Um, faith is spirit. And what we've come to realize in this spirit is that it's the spirit of Yahweh that in uh, righteousness that we're referring to. We're not speaking it according to the top of our heads or, or from a, a blind faith uh, position. Uh, we're speaking it from, because of what Yahweh has revealed and what he has given unto us. And each and every one of us has to rest in that. Those who are troubled rest with us. See, and when Joshua the Messiah shall be revealed, and as you know, we have always said, uh, we hope that ha happened unto you as of right now. So when you come to know that uh, the faith that you have, that, that's being done on a daily basis. See, you're not uh, as it appears to be. You you are you are actually walking in the spirit, and the spirit of faith that is in you has got you looking at the things that you are you are being that you are seeing, and taking you through the things that you're going through. That's Yahweh. That's that's and, and, and we were walking the other day, and he was showing us how that uh, we can identify with wisdom. We see it in operation in Yahweh's purpose. We can identify with faith. We see it in operation in Yahweh's purpose. We can identify with love and with beauty because it's not a natural thing. It's not a physical thing. It is truly uh, uh, invisible as the scripture lesson was saying, see? So we, we, we uh, in this faith that we've come to, uh, Yahweh has 
prepared us for the things that are that are coming up. And that's why we're here where we are now. Every step of the way, Yahweh prepared his for what was coming. And even before the corona came forth, Yahweh had spoken the words about being able to meet in a place, having a place to meet, and then you having a group there, and how that, that wasn't going to be always. Well, see, when the when uh, <laughs> And it's just beautiful to me because the speaker just got through saying, uh, heard a voice from heaven when the Yahweh speak and the sign follow. But see, you have to have patience and wait on Yahweh. And he'll show you that he's the cause and the effect. He is the source and the substance. You know, he's the one who causing us to have uh, these, uh, these um, um, not so much anecdotes as it is experiences of faith. You see, the experiences of, of him showing his power and his mercy and his grace, you see? And we can identify those things because we know we, don't, we, we accept the fact that we, uh, when it comes to the reality of it, we, we, don't, we don't have any power. We're not doing anything on our own. We can't even breathe on our own, you see? It's because Yahweh has set it so in our heart and in our mind that we would follow him and that we would be one with him, you see? So then, uh, the, all the things we've been given, all the things we've been expressed and given to us, they are for us. They are for the Son. And as the previous speaker was saying also, it is Yahweh in us that is speaking the thing out. And see, everyone is going to be right where they need to be in order for this thing to go where it needs to go and go out as it needs to go out. See, there's nothing. That, Yahweh's not losing anything in his, in, in his Son. See, they all shall hear and they all shall do according to the Father's will. And that's an automatic thing, see? So when you let go and you learn to let go and accept the, the purpose that Yahweh has, has set in place for us to have and for us to be one with, you see, then, then you can, because another a definition of the word trust, of, of the word uh, faith is trust. So you'll be able to trust in him, see? You'll be able to have confidence in him. And that's what faith is, having confidence in something. And as we were reading the scripture lesson there a few moments ago, and we could, could uh, relate to Abraham and the things that he did back under the law and, uh, there, as well as with Daniel, which wasn't brought up, but Daniel and the lion then, as, as well as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all the ones who came through by faith, that faith in Yahweh is what got them through whatever situation they were in. And see, we're doing the same thing. It's not a, it's not a no difference. It's the same thing. It's just repeating itself. You see what I'm saying? The repetition of it and the exercise of it is what you want to have. You want to have the exercise. You want to have the order of going up and down because that's being a, as a cleansing going on in you that you are, are being shown the, the, the oracles of Yahweh. I want to read something right quick, uh, the power within you, and uh, then I'll, uh, I'll yield. Um, I'm reading from page six of, the, of that book. Uh, uh, pamphlet or that uh, writing of Dr. Kelly. <clears throat> and this correlates, go, with, go right into what the previous week was saying, what Shermaine was saying about the moving from the carnal state and moving into a spiritual state of being translated psychologically and spiritually so in your mind. But that's a, that's a conscious realization that we have to take on. Someone is need to mute themselves. Shoot. Okay, so uh, page 12, uh, power within you. I have noticed a lot of confusion exists in the so-called Christian world about, it says, Joshua the Messiah, which we have discussed recently. To me, Joshua is not the physical man walking around on the face of the earth. If so, he could not be within anyone. And as I often hear the gross error explaining the church is within you, or each one of one must have a church within you. The church is not within anyone. You are in the church. If the church was in you, then there would be a number of churches. <laughs> uh, but there is but one church. Then all of us must be in that one church with that one quickening spirit in us. To understand that, it somewhat gives us an elevated concept of what really is within us, of what should be within us. 
To me, Yahshua is a quickening spirit, not a physical man that will come down through the sky and bring a lot of angels. I think of him walking around here on the face of the earth as Yahshua the, sa the Savior. And now that physical body has been taken off. And for him to be in you at this particular time, I would say that it was the spirit of Yahweh, a Yahshua in you, which means one and the same thing. For that reason, I say that before it can become effective, it must become a counterpart a, to shape and to form our lives. We must have that power within us. Now, I'm going to say something right here. We're, we're talking about having a profound knowledge and an understanding of Yahweh and his purpose. The profound knowledge itself is an intercourse with Yahweh. And when you accept his presence in you, then you can understand that power that is within you. So he said, we must have that power within us. As long as, it, as, as we just take it in a passive way, passive meaning that you just might as well be believing in God and what he's doing for the world instead of you believing in Yahweh. As long as we just take it in a passive way, something to talk about as Yahweh and the universe or some church or some charlatan talking about it in a passive way, it doesn't mean anything to us, but it's got to become living power within your conscious. But it's got to become, repeating, living power within your conscious. You must realize within yourself before it ever becomes, if, need to look up the word realize if you hadn't looked it up. You must realize within yourself before it ever become effective in your life and the troubles and besetments that come about from time to time, hindering obstacles which we encounter every day within our lives. If we are not conscious at all times, and I used to say this all the time, if he hadn't said it and if he hadn't shown that it was possible for you to do it, then he wouldn't have never said it. If we're not conscious at all times of that ever presence, of that power that is within us and utilize it to the best advantage, to me it means that it really isn't in you at all. The power in you that is effective in your life, to me it means that you have the Holy Spirit in you. Now, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, as Dr. Bird and Dr. Harry showed, you have a physical point of view by the blood, by your psychic forces, then you don't have any courage or strength to lean upon. You are just going along with the stream. Don't know how to conduct yourself under strenuous things that would affect you. You come to the place where you're discouraged, upset, and neurotic. You can't maintain your balance because the things that is the thing that is within you, instead of it being the power the constructive power that would elevate you or cause you to ascend to higher heights, to accomplish the achievements and better understanding, more knowledge, more wisdom, rather than just jumping off someplace in the sky. If it's not that way within you, then it's got to be that negative force that is operating within you to cause you to be discouraged, despondent, and et cetera. It won't be long until it will react in your physical body and then you go to the doctor and they ask the doctor, so forth and so on. But I wanted to read that, and especially that part where he said here that it had to be living. It, let me read it again. But it's got to become living power within your conscience. Now, how does it do that? We talk about faith being the substance. What is substance? Substance is, is knowledge. Substance is, is wisdom. If we don't use it, then we don't, it, it's not becoming a part of us. So it has to become a living reality in us, and we have to use it 
as we are moving through and moving out of this creation. And I'm saying that in that way because Yahweh is preparing us to take these bodies off. And we want to do it now before the universal revelation, if you will, of the thing being being manifest. So it must become a living reality. That means that meditation has to be more than just words, as the previous speaker said. It has to become an exercise. It has to become a daily administration as the high priest was administering back there in the, in the tabernacle there on a daily basis. It must become a daily administration in our heart and in our mind. And that's how we're growing. That's how we're moving. That's how we're having our beings in Yahshua the Messiah. For that, I thank you and Yahweh uh, be magnified in our hearts and minds. I wanted to say something. Is it, um, is this testimony? Yes, ma'am. Yes, 10 minute time limit. Oh, yes, oh five minutes. Okay. I think um, I, I want to um, just give a testimony. This is Sheila Carter about faith and something that uh, Yahweh um, showed me. One thing about faith is this. You say, what is faith? What is it? It says it's the substance of things hoped for, but what is faith? I always go back to Romans 1, 19, 20, that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for he has shown it to them. Now, if a person, if I told you, listen, you say, how do you get to Chicago? And I'll give you the directions to get to Chicago. If you have faith in what I'm saying, you are going to be obedient and follow the directions of what I said to get to Chicago. Now, Yahweh has, um, Yahweh has set forth a roadmap for us to have salvation. And if we have faith and we believe in what he says, then we're going to be obedient to that. So obedience goes along with faith. But now in order for me to have faith, I have to, we, you're not going to have faith in somebody you don't know. It says eternal life is to know him. And it's been spoken or it's been, uh, it's, it, um, to know Yahweh, to know that everything, as Dr. Um, oh gosh, my mind is going, but um, as, um, as Carla's dad, um, Dr. My mind is gone. Boston. Boston, as he was saying everything, Everything is one or another manifestation. It's an expression of Yahweh. Everything. And he is controlling all things. Everything that happens. He's controlling it all. So to know that he's controlling everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. It says all things work to the good of them that love him. And even though you don't, you say, well, Yahweh, why am I going through this? Why is this, that, and other? Don't worry about it. Trust the process. He is controlling all things. He is a pattern. Death, burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. It's a pattern. If someone came to my house and knocked on the door and said, hey, Sheila, at 8 in the morning, I would say, oh, well, so-and-so just happened to come by. Then they come back again at 8 o'clock the next morning, and 8 o'clock 
the next morning, at 8 o'clock the next morning, I would say, now, that's not just happened haphazardly. They purposely have come by. And that's what Yahweh is showing in his pattern, that everything is, is, is repeated. It's not airing. And so, if, just like the prodigal son, if it can, something clicks and say, wait a minute, why am I going through all of this? Why am I worried? Why am I stressed? Why am I irritated? Why am I mad with the next person because of what they did to me? Because Yahweh purposed it all. He said he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh didn't have a choice in the matter. He said that Israel would go down and be in a land that they knew not of and be in bondage. He purposed it. So what, whatever it is you're going through, if he has you in bondage, he has you going through something, he has the power to bring you out of it. It's his purpose. It's just trusting it and loving him. Finally, out of all these years, all these years, finally, finally, I said, wow, Yahweh. You have purposed this. You. And trusting him and submitting ourselves. When I look at obedience, in, and I'm going to be finished. Obedience says compliance with an order, request, or law, or submission with another's authority. Submitting ourselves and saying, okay, Yahweh. That's what the prodigal son did. He lived life with the riotous living. He did it his way. And when he got out there with the pigs on his last leg, it, he came to himself and said, Psh, my father, shoot, the service eat better than this. That was submitting himself, submitting himself. And he went back to his father's house. And his father, he embraced him with this robe, a beautiful robe. And it makes me think about how it says, "I." and a robe, which you, when you put on a robe, it covers you. How it says, our sins are covered. And when you see a tree, here in Detroit, we have trees that are naked. And a naked tree is a dead tree. It reminds me of when the blind man said, I see. Men walk as trees, but when that tree is covered with that fruit, that shows that tree is alive, covered with love. Not just loving those that love you, but loving and giving, that regardless of what, having faith, being obedient, not leaning to thine own understanding but having faith and trusting in him. And when you don't, it says in patience, possess your soul. You just have to be still. Have some patience. And it's a gift from Yahweh because he has to give you patience. He has to give it to you, which as the previous speaker said, is a process. But with that, you know, that's all I wanted to say. I hope that uh, you got something out of it. Hallelujah. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. I think my phone is not going to go out. I'm just going to share a couple of things real quick and then let Dr. Boston have it. Um, if I can get you guys to mute yourselves out because I can still hear rumbling and everything in the background. Um, I enjoyed all the testimonies. I thank everybody for sharing um, their testimonies. I've enjoyed everything that Yahweh has done. Um, it's just been a, it's been a beautiful ride. I see how everything is just kind of falling in place and just kind of 
it's just lining up and to be able to see it is just it's beautiful but anyway so with everybody's talking about faith and the scripture lesson is my go-to scripture lesson i was scrambling uh trying to hurry to get on the road to get back home and i didn't really have a scripture lesson to call so i called that one that's my go-to but um when it was read tonight it read different it hit different it, like it just kind of jumped out at me a lot of things jumped out at me it was just beautiful and it kind of everything goes along with what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks and it's just it's, it's always is wonderful and so what i wanted to share real quick um i'm not even gonna take the whole 10 minutes i don't think i am um what i want to share real quick is um when it says now faith is the substance and my mother-in-law just hit on it faith is the substance of things hoped for and faith is the evidence of things that are not even seen. And what is it that we can't see? Yahweh. <laughs> Faith is the evidence that Yahweh is real. So, and like she said, it's not, you can't have faith in something that you don't know anything about. Right now, no, like when you look at Noah, Noah was saying it was gonna rain. He had never seen rain before. And so the people are, okay, Noah, well, what evidence did you have that it's gonna rain in that? we've never seen rain before faith is my evidence my faith in Yahweh Yahweh said that I believe him so I have faith that it's gonna rain okay Abraham ain't nobody ever had a child with their wife when their wife is barren and she can't she ain't got no menstrual cycle no more so how do you know what evidence that you have that you're gonna have this child that he promised you 25 years ago what evidence do you do you have that this is so my faith and Yahweh is my evidence. All right, Moses. Yahweh say, go down and deliver, deliver those people out. Yahweh, and you were worried about, you know, the men that sought your life or whatever. Yahweh said, all that sought your life, Moses, are dead. Now you stood up talking, looking at a burning bush, a burning, a burning bush that was not being burned up. You ain't never seen that before. And something in that bush called you by your name. You didn't know Yahweh's name prior to that. So what evidence do you have, Moses, that when you go down there, nobody's going to try to kill you? My faith is my evidence. So when you have been, you have been told that you are Yahweh, how do you know that? When you've been told that out of this flesh, your Redeemer lived, what evidence do you have? My faith in Yahweh is my evidence that out of this flesh, my Redeemer liveth. My faith in Yahweh is my evidence. But guess what? You cannot have faith in something that you don't know. And so when he said wisdom and knowledge is the stability of the time and the strength of your salvation, you can't have faith without having knowledge of because that wisdom and knowledge it could allow us are stupid in thinking that you have faith. Now, just because Yahweh was running the show and Israel was his people and things, all that, Yahshua the Son and none and all this and that, you still have to go according to his purpose. You have to follow Yahweh in you. you have to, and Yahweh is wisdom. He is knowledge. And so when Yahshua the Son of God got ready to take them on over into the land of Canaan, Michael, the archangel who he created, told him, wait a minute, take your shoes off your feet. He had to bow down to Michael. Michael said, oh, you be for us or you be against us. Because had he not bowed down and obeyed what Michael was saying, Michael was going to do what he was set up to do. So even in that, he obeyed his, matter of fact, same thing, Yahshua, this is what, this is my point. Faith without wisdom is, is, is no, it's is void. When Yahshua the Messiah walked around, that was Yahweh Elohim manifested in a physical body, fully conscious of his purpose. When he walked around, it said that he didn't even subject himself to men because he knew what was in man. You would have thought him being the creator of heaven and earth, walking around in a physical body, he could do whatever he wanted to do. He can go and tell man to do this and tell man to do that, but he didn't subject himself to the man because he knew what was in the man. He even had enough wisdom and understanding to walk circumspect in this thing. And so my point is this, when he told Israel and them, when he was running down those uh, 
10 devastating plagues down there back in Egypt. And he said, look now, I'm gonna rain down this hail and this fire. Anybody, whether it's Egyptian or Israel alike, anybody in that field, if you don't get your tail in that house, anybody in that field will die from this hail and this, so you better get your cattle out the field, get your servants out the field. And it says all that regarded the word of Yahweh, they obeyed and they got it tail out the field. But those that did not regard the word of Yahweh, they didn't obey him and they lost their cattle and whatever else in the field, Yahweh destroyed it. disregard Yahweh as foolishness and we think that that's us having faith it's a hurricane coming a tornado coming you got trees all around your house oh I got faith that Yahweh ain't gonna let these trees fall in my house you better get your tail down to some safety and have faith that Yahweh uh, will give you wisdom to move around in his creation the way he has set for you to do it that's look let's not tempt Let's not test Yahweh in these things. Let's look at the story on what Yahweh has done because it repeats itself over and over again. Obey the word of Yahweh. Listen to the word of Yahweh. Have faith in Yahweh because the same one that raised Yahshua the Messiah from the dead is the same one that can raise your you from a death state of consciousness and elevate your consciousness to the point to where you realize that you and Yahweh are one and the same. Because the same mind that was in Yahshua the Messiah is now in you. And it's only by the preaching of the gospel. Have faith in Yahweh to obey him. When he say, learn of me, learn of him. Yahweh cannot lie. When you have faith in Yahweh, he has to do everything that he said he would do. With that, I say hallelujah. Dr. Boston, do you have anything you would like to share? Well, first of all, I want to say I've enjoyed everything. Uh, I'm glad that everybody got a chance to exercise themselves. Uh, I want to take a couple of minutes and speak on what we were talking about here, and that is faith. <clears throat> faith come by hearing. And that by hearing the word of Yahweh. So let me start like this. I'm giving the 10th chapter of Romans. Also Romans 3.19. Colossians 1 and 12. First John 5th chapter. I think that's better take me there. Uh, Romans 10 and 1. Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Totally there. <clears throat> they had a zeal of Yahweh, but it wasn't according to knowledge. In other words, in their mind, the way that they thought they was to serve Yahweh was by offering up sacrifices. It became a way to them of serving and honoring Yahweh by offering up sacrifices. But Yahweh said he didn't desire those things. So they had a zeal of Yahweh, but it wasn't according to knowledge. They didn't know how to serve him. Read. For, the, for they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. For now the then, in order to understand that, you got to know what the righteousness of Yahweh is, which we're going to touch on that. Abraham believed Yahweh. <clears throat> that was the righteousness, you see. 
Now, faith means to have confidence or trust in something or someone. Absolute trust. Absolute confidence. Now, how can we have faith or confidence in Yahweh if we don't know anything about him or his purpose and plan? See? And so he had to teach us of himself, which is what he had to do here. But now he laid those things down in the law and in the prophets for Israel. And also, indeed, the sons of the Gentiles, too, once he come to them. But basically, this was about Israel. And he laid the law down there for them. And, and all of it was pointing up to him. And so when he come in to fulfill those things and move him out of the way, then when the gospel is preached uh, according to the law and the prophets, then it's going to lead them to the Messiah. That once that faith has come, they're no longer subject unto a schoolmaster. For now I have faith, I have confidence in Yahweh. I now know that it is him. And I now know that he cannot lie. That he promised me eternal life if I believe. I believe. Therefore, I have faith and confidence in him. See, so that was asked, well, how did that feel? It feels like this. It's peace. It's peaceable. It's joy. It's happiness. It's also confidence. See, when you know, you understand, when you truly no, without, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that what you have received is the unadulterated truth. When you really know that, then you can have confidence in it. You can stand on it. You don't worry about death and dying. You know you, Yahweh is giving you life. So that takes the sting out of that. That takes that off your shoulders. So you can have peace. You can have joy. You can have confidence in preaching this gospel because you know what you're talking about is true and real. That's what faith is about. Finish that. For the Messiah is the end of the law for the obtaining of righteousness to everyone that believeth. That's right. Now, he's the end for the Jews. We never had a law to Gentiles. Because now, that law was a form of righteousness to them. You pick this up in the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy. That law was a form of righteousness to them. So when the Messiah come in and fulfill that law, that was the end of the law for the obtaining of righteousness. So you can't get be righteous or get it in righteousness by trying to keep a law. Hmm. So he was the end of that. Read. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, speak it on this wise. Say, now you see that? <clears throat> We're talking about the righteousness of Yahweh, which is of faith. It's a righteous thing to believe and have confidence and trust in Yahweh. That's a righteous thing. Why? Because he's the only thing that exists. To have confidence in something other than that is idolatry. It's sacrilegious. It's blasphemy. You see, Yahweh is the only thing that exists. Or what else or who else would you have confidence in? Hmm. And so among all these things he created down here and subjected us to, now he got to come in and bring us through that wilderness or that minefield to lead us on back to him. But I'm going to have to cut this up. Uh, let's go on down uh, to the 11th verse. For the scriptures, go on where you are, because I don't want to cut that out of there. Keep going. Right. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise: Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring the Messiah down from above, or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring the Messiah again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou we, shalt. We are preaching the word of faith which we preach. That what? 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Yahshua is the Messiah and shalt believe in thine heart that Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe that? This is where trust come in at. Now, you need a little bit more than that. So what he's going to do is to take you back to the very beginning and bring this thing down where he started at and bring it on down through the flesh, on down through Adam, bring it all the way down to the Messiah, and then bring it all the way down to H.C. Kelly, all the way down to where we are now. That's what he is doing. That's what he has done. That's right. This is the Yahweh that we've come to know. That set these things up back there in pure spirit, you see. Uh, read on. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with Hold the up. With the heart, man believe unto righteousness. It's a righteous thing to have faith in Yahweh. Do you understand? Read that again. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, see? Because no man can confess that Yahshua is the Messiah but by the Spirit of Yahweh. That's the forming of him in you. That's him being formed in you. That's right. Read. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there Hold is... it right there. Hold up. Now, when I said that's him being formed in you, I'm talking about the truth. That's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what the Messiah is. And that's what's being formed in you is the truth being put together in you. The truth about Yahweh. And it has to come together. You have to put it together in pieces. But I'm for you to see the whole picture of the thing. See? Because if we could digest it all at once like Dr. Kelly did, that would be great. <laughs> but Yahweh giving it to us like that. I remember he used to say this, and he was jealous of us because we would get it a little at a time. And that's how Yahweh got this set up, see? We decrease as he increase in us. We are dying out of the old and we're coming into the new. We're coming into the reality of the Yahweh and who we are and where we come from. We have a role to play in this creation. We are playing the role that we will set out or cut out from the, the mountain and subject it on this earth to play. As Yahweh is in every other vessel that he operates in. <laughs> Yahweh is in the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Carrying out his will. And that don't take nothing from him, and it don't add nothing to him. Read on. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Elohim over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now, he's rich unto all that call upon him. See? Read on. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. Shall be delivered. So then your name is important. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the name to call on, then you can't be delivered. So how shall they call on them, on him, in mm -hmm. whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. Read. How, should, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they, be, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Yahweh 
who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. But That's I good. That's good. Now I said faith come by hearing the word, the W-O-R-D. Right. Not the W-D-S. The word of Yahweh is Elohim. You understand? Faith come by hearing him preach this gospel, which is what he did in A.C. Kinley. That was him in A.C. Kinley preaching his gospel and declaring this truth unto us. That's how our faith was established, by him lining those things up and taking us back and showing us things that were just unlawful, impossible for a man to see and to understand. See, nobody knew nothing about pure spirit. You understand? Nobody knew nothing about Yahweh's supernal nature. They didn't know nothing about him taking on shape and form and becoming a pattern. That information was not made conscious to the world until the vision was given in 31. To establish in our heart and mind that it is Yahweh that was from the beginning that's now down here giving us this and raising us back up to himself. We now know that. That's what established the peace, the joy, and the happiness. You don't care about this life no more. You're not worried about dying out of this flesh no more. You know your life is in the Messiah with Yahweh. You know that. So if you know that, that's what your faith is established. You, you let it go. You turn the world loose. You let this life go. Now, you don't be crazy now. When I say let this life go, I ain't talking about just, just lay it out somewhere and try to die. See? I'm talking about consciously. Let these things go. You know you got to have a job to make a living to try to keep this, this physical man alive. So you do those necessary things. But outside of that, you let this world go. Don't be caught up in it. It's affairs. Chasing after worldly lust and illusions. Those are traps. We ought to learn to have know that by now. Those are things that lure us out into the world. We're supposed to be coming out of the world, not trying to get in it or get deeper in it. But let's go to uh, Romans 3.19. I've got to speed up here. Romans 3.19. We're talking faith come out here in the word. Now, Romans 3.19. Romans 3, 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before Yahweh. So now we know, how do we know that? By the knowledge that Yahweh has given us. We didn't know that the law was given to the Jews and Jews only until he came and told us. We thought we had to keep the law too. Or that it was given to us. We do have to keep it. <laughs> well, now I'm not going to take it somewhere else, but I'm going to have to stop it right there. But we do know that the law was given to Israel and Israel only. We found that out. Or Yahweh brought that to our attention and gave us that knowledge. So we know that whatsoever the law says is talking to them that's under the law. Read. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. No flesh, as Jew or Gentile, shall be justified in his sight by trying to keep a law. Read on. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's right. But That's a deep one. But, mm. But now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now hold up. Now the righteousness of the Ten Commandment law, see, Yahweh's righteousness was being witnessed without that Ten Commandment law, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. In other words, what was the law and prophets talking about? Faith toward Yahweh. Abraham believed Yahweh. 430 years before the law was given. And that was accounted to him for righteousness. So the law which came 430 years after the promise was made did not disannul that promise and make it not effect. 
Yahweh promised to Abraham. Abraham believed Yahweh, so Yahweh made good on that promise. And that's what's going on. Read. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith of Yahshua the Messiah, unto all and upon all them that believe. For See there that? is no difference. Upon all them that believe. The gospel of the truth when it is preached. Read. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahshua the Messiah, whom Yahweh has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. That's right. Now he declared his righteousness. See, you have to have, as we wrote there in, in uh, Revelation, you have to, I think it's the 14th chapter of Revelation, you have to have the faith of Yahshua, is what he said. Yahshua trusted Yahweh all the way to death. You understand? And even, okay, I didn't want to go there. All right. Even, well, I'm going to go here. Even when he was in the garden praying, he asked Yahweh to take that cup away from him as he was Praying, he said, uh, great drops of sweat rolling off his face of like unto blood, drops of blood. And he was in agony. He was agonizing over the fact that he had to go to that cross. And he asked Yahweh to take that from him. He said, but not my will, Father, your will be done. In other words, he went on and he trusted Yahweh that he would raise him from the dead. That was real. See? Because when he got down to the cross, he said, my El, my El, why hast thou forsaken me? Same thing with John. See, <laughs> when he was cast in prison, go ask him, is he the one or should I look for another? See, when it comes time to take the body off, there's got to be a transition. Yahweh had to leave him in order for him to die. Otherwise, he could die. But he restored him with everlasting favor when he raised him from the dead and sit him on his right hand. It had to be that way. That wasn't just a saying in the Bible. Finish that so we can move on. Finish where you are. Romans 3. Is anybody there? To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Yahweh. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahshua. Where is boasting then? It That's is right. Now he might be just a fire of them that believe in Yahshua. See? That's how you're justified. Is by your faith in Yahshua the Messiah. That's how you're elevated. That's how you're pruned. That's how you're purged. So that you can gain even the more knowledge and understanding. Wisdom and knowledge that is the stability of the times and the strength of our salvation. Wisdom and knowledge is strength. Strength is power. Those are attributes that are activated and carried out its will or the purpose. Read on. There is then. It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Now, that's the law now. He fulfilled that old covenant, got rid of that old law, and established a new law. The law now is the law of faith. Without faith, 
It's impossible to please him. Hold that right there. But go ahead and finish it and then get the 13th chapter of Romans. 28th verse. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law. See? Now, read on. Is he the Elohim of the Jews only? Is he not also of other nations? Yes, of other nations also. Seeing it is one Elohim which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? By no means. Yea, we establish the law. That's how the law is established, by your faith in Yahweh, see? In other words, you're not going to go out and commit adultery. You're not going to fornicate. You're not going to do any of those things that the law says. You see what I'm talking about? And so it's him in you that has completed and fulfilled the thing, operating and functioning in you. It's no more you. Now, let's get to uh, Romans 14, 22 on down, and then I'll try to move on into... Uh, and then uh, 1 John. Romans 14. Romans 14, 22. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before Yahweh. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. But whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That's what I want. Whatsoever is not of faith is a sin. That's the law now. If you don't have faith and confidence in Yahweh, that's a sin. Now let's get uh, Colossians 1 and 12, and then we go to First John, fifth chapter, and I'll be through with it. I'm trying to do two things here to show you what the faith is and, and, and uh, how it operates and, and, and the, uh, how it feels to have faith and confidence in Yahweh. It feels real good <laughs> you see, uh, to know the truth. It feels good to know the folks, to know that nobody can disprove it or uh, distorted or tear it down. You understand? When you know it, you know it. Mm -hmm. That's confidence. That's peace. Okay. That's happiness. That's joy. I'm not worried about death and dying. That's been taken care of. I believe what he said. He said he died for me. I believe that. Okay. <laughs> you understand? And when he rose from the dead, I rose from the dead. That's right. Since that, that that happened because I'm resurrected in my mind as I speak. That's the dead I'm talking about. Rose from a dead state of consciousness into one that's alive forevermore. I will not die. I'll take this body off, but I'll not die. I <laughs> died when the Messiah died. Read on. Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in life. Now, he has made us, uh, he has made, <clears throat> set us apart to be in, uh, partakers of the inheritance of the sons in knowledge. Read. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and, and who hath delivered us, he's already done that. And you go to the second chapter of Ephesians, you understand, it tells you that, that Yahweh has caught up, up while we were dead and yet in our sin, has gathered us together with the Messiah, has caught up with him. While we were still dead and yet in our sin, we were caught up with the Messiah, or quickened together with him. So now the thing is being made manifest when it's already taken place in spirit. It's now being made manifest by the appearing of the Messiah down here on this end. Read. 
and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He yeah. hath translated us into the kingdom. Now, what is the kingdom? The kingdom of Yahweh is peace, is righteousness, peace, joy, and happiness in the Holy Spirit, which is the truth. He has translated us into the truth. The truth is in us, and we are in the truth. We, we. <clears throat> Go ahead. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. All right, let's go to 1 John 5th chapter. We're talking about believing and trusting what Yahweh has told us. 1 John Knowing that that's by the proof and the evidence that he has given us. See, faith is the evidence. If you have faith and confidence in Yahweh, that's evidence that you have seen something that can't be seen. Uh, you see the invisible Yahweh. You know that he exists. <laughs> and you see him by the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding that he has given you of himself. That's how you see him. Not with your physical eyes, but with the knowledge and wisdom and the understanding that Yahweh has given you to see him with through the face of Yahshua the Messiah. Read. Whosoever believeth that Yahshua is the Messiah is born of Yahweh. Now, whosoever believe that Yahshua is the Messiah is born of Yahweh. See? That's the new creature. That's right. That's the true son of Yahweh that, that, that's born of him. That's born of his spirit. That means you're the same as he is. Yahweh don't have no, you understand that? Humans can't bring forth cows and donkeys and stuff like that. He said, let bring forth fruit after his own kind. So if we are born of Yahweh, that means we can be the spirit of his spirit, folks. That makes us the same as he is. The difference is we don't have the majesty and the crown of, and the power, you understand, that he possessed in his totality. We don't have that yet. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're growing up in, too. Read. Whosoever believes that Yahshua is the Messiah is born of Yahweh. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Mm -hmm. By I this do. we know. Mm -hmm. I love the truth. That's my Savior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's the truth. That's what got on that cross. You understand? Was the truth. That's why I got there on that cross. You understand? I love the truth. Mm -hmm. That's my life that was laid down for me. Read. By this we know that we love the children of Yahweh when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. When we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. See? Read. And this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. They are not grievous, you see. Now, what are the commandments of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. I think you picked it up in Matthew 22 by 36. Mm -hmm. Let's pick that up real quick. Find out what the commandments of Yahweh is. Matthew 22, 36. Rabbi, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahshua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy, Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment of the whole law. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now you got it? Those are the commandments of Yahweh. On those two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The love of Yahweh with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And the second one is just like that one. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because your neighbor is yourself. You're just unconscious of it. That's right. <laughs> I love these things. Uh, read on. For sure. Back where you. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of Yahweh that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world. Overcome the world. Whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcome mm -hmm. the world. See, that knowledge is, 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 is power. You understand? That's how right. you're able to overcome the world and the things that are in it. Read. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. How we overcome. Why? Because mm -hmm. Yahweh is working it out for us. You understand? Mm -hmm. Working it for us. Why? Because we have faith. Abraham believed Yahweh. Yahweh worked the work for Abraham. All right. He took care of Abraham. You understand? So I am your shield. And I'm your exceeding and great reward. You understand that? <laughs> Abraham had that confidence in Yahweh. We too must have that same confidence in him. He can't lie, folks. You can just <laughs> just relax and just fall asleep in him if you want. You understand? <laughs> and lay down and relax and rest. It's, it's taken care of. Mm. Read. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth, that Yahshua is the son of Yahweh. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahshua the Messiah, not by water only, but, but, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is true. Now that's key. It's mm -hmm. the spirit that... What spirit? The spirit of the Father in you. Mm -hmm. Bear witness truth. Uh, he bear witness to his son, which is the truth. Sitting in you, when you hear the truth, he lets you know, that's my son. <laughs> you see? That's his son, the truth. You understand? <laughs> Read. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Now look up on that chart, Moses' chart, and look at Elohim up there. Mm -hmm. That's the Father. Mm -hmm. That's the Son. That's the That's Holy right. Spirit. Mm -hmm. But you don't see but one image. <laughs> mm. And he's playing all the parts. Mm -hmm. Now when he manifests in the flesh, you're able to see him as the Savior. That's what he come down for. To gather things back to himself. See? And he called Joshua his son. <laughs> Ooh, this thing is something else, man. Uh, <laughs> but read on. Mm. <laughs> for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Now what he's doing, he's mm -hmm. what Paul is doing, what John is doing, he's laying down the witnesses. Mm -hmm. See? That will lead one to understand and know that this is the true Elohim. That he has come in our day. That was him back then in AD uh, 33 that hung out there on that cross, or 34. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. All this evidence lines up and points him out so that we can know down to this day that he has now come to us as a quickening spirit or as the Holy Spirit or as the truth. That's him now. Read. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. Well, greater. See, the way he lied it up by the pattern. His witness is far greater than that of a man. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he has testified of his son. Now pay attention to this now. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. This is the witness of Yahweh, which he has testified of his son. 
Go ahead, David. He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath, hath the witness in himself. Hath the witness in himself. Now, then it said that the Spirit that bear witness and the mm -hmm. Spirit is true. So if you bear witness to the Messiah, that means you have the Spirit, the witness right there in yourself. All right. Witness it unto the truth. I witness it unto his son. This is my son. Mm. Mm. Read. He that believeth not Yahweh has made him a liar because he believeth not on the, the record that Yahweh gave of his son. Don't believe the record that Yahweh gave of his son. Now, that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yahweh has given us a record. He recorded it. Mm -hmm. All the way down the line. See? And Read. this is the record that Yahweh has given to us, eternal life. And this Hold life, up now. Mm-hmm. Record. This is what was recorded. That Yahweh has given unto us eternal life. Mm -hmm. Read. And this life is in his son. This life is in the truth. Mm -hmm. He that has the son has life. The truth. And he that has, has not the mm -hmm. He that has not the truth don't have life. That's right. I am the truth, the way, and the life. They're all one and the same. The truth is the way, the way is the truth, the truth is the life, and the life is the truth and the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's all one and the same, see? All right, read on. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. See that now? Mm -hmm. I write these things down to you so that you can know. So you didn't know you had it. Mm -hmm. You didn't know Yahweh had given it to you before the world was. See? But now this is given to you so that you can know that you mm -hmm. have eternal life. So that you can rest in and not be troubled by your adversaries or by the adversaries of this world. Mm -hmm. You can rest, not be disturbed by those things. And when they do rise up, you can put them, you have the power to put them down. All right. You understand? That's how this is. So when you know you have eternal life, you're good to go. That's peace. That's joy. That's happiness. That's confidence. I stand up anywhere and speak this truth. I ain't worried about a thing. Mm -hmm. Not a thing. See, that's what it feels like, folks. It feels good. <laughs> you understand? All right, read on. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh. And this is the confidence that we have in him. And that, that what I told you if you were... Mm -hmm. Hold up. Faith. Mm -hmm. See, that's confidence, folks. Mm -hmm. This confidence that we have in him. Read. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Heareth us. Mm -hmm. Read. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that ye should pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. We know that whatsoever is born of Yahweh sinneth not. But he that is begotten of Yahweh keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Don't touch him. Mm -hmm. 
Why? And we know. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because if you have been translated into the kingdom, All right. Satan is he's not in the kingdom. Hmm. There it is. The only way that you can be troubled by him is that you are going up and down. <laughs> understand? In this thing. Mm -hmm. You have to come down to where he's at in order to be troubled by him. Go ahead. You understand mm -hmm. that? He cannot enter back into the kingdom. All right. So don't understand what the kingdom is and then get in there where you're already in it. You're just unconscious of it. There have to be a falling away. All right. You understand? He's already translated you in it. You just got to make you conscious. That means there got to be some falling away going on in your mind and in your conscious. The flesh got to fall away so you can see where you are. Go ahead and finish that, David. And we know that we are of Yahweh, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Do you really know that? Mm. We know that the whole world lieth in wickedness. A and blind we know. man, mm -hmm. you understand that? We know this. All right. Well, Yahweh has given us an understanding. Hmm. And we know that the Son of Yahweh is come. We know that given. the Son of Yahweh is coming one day. Nope. Nope. Is coming present tense. Ever present. That's right. He is come. He's here now. Mm -hmm. He never went anywhere. If you want to know the truth, where is he going? <laughs> hmm. All he did was took off the flesh. <laughs> Ain't nowhere for him to go. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, finish that. And we know that the son of Yahweh is come and has given us an understanding. See that? That's how we know that. Mm -hmm. See that now? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In that he's given us an understanding, now we have evidence of the things that you can't see. That's All Yahweh right. Elohim. All right. Mm -hmm. He has given us an understanding that we may know him. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that we are in him. That, that is true. Is true. Mm -hmm. Even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. This mm -hmm. is the true Elohim and eternal life. All right. You understand? That's how it is, people. That's where your confidence comes from. The knowledge and the understanding that Yahweh has given you and you have been assured of. And you can stand flat-footed. You ain't worried about what's going on out here in this world. So you right. follow the spirit of the Messiah in you. Can I read just one more? Uh, Romans... 8.14 Romans 8.14 For as many as are led by the spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh. You see that? As many that are led by the truth, they are the son of Yahweh. Now, the spirit of Yahweh is divine wisdom, knowledge, understanding, strength, foundation, power. That's the spirit of Yahweh. Now, when you compress that or you put it in a uh, conceptual form, then it comes down in the form of the truth. That's ooh-wee, see, ooh-wee. <laughs> ooh, Yahweh is so, mm. all right. Uh, go ahead. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But we have received knowledge again to fear. That's the spirit of bondage, carnal knowledge. We haven't received that again to fear, dying and death. See, that's not creeping back in. You understand? Once, once our house was cleaned up, and you see, as the world back there, as the prayer went, you understand, the man's house was, was swept and garnished, 
And no evil spirit that was cast out went found something more worse than himself and came back and broke back in on that man. And his latter state was worse than the beginning. And Doc said that was the old Sanhedrin council. Come back with that doctrine and throw it on him. <laughs> and his last state was worse than the beginning. See? And that's what that's what be going on, folks. Uh, mm. Folks that come to class and to get thrown out or get out for whatever reason, then they get on to some other doctrine, you understand, uh, and just get lost out there in all that mess. Mm -hmm. Read. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Abba, my Father. The spirit... My couldn't do that before. Couldn't do it before. Got a knowledge of it. Now I can truly say with pride, my father, mm -hmm. <laughs> I Elohim, my savior. You see what I'm talking about? Read. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. And if children, his spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given this to us. Mm -hmm. His spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. And if children, then the heirs, heirs. Mm -hmm. heirs of Yahweh. We are inheriting his majesty, his power, his glory, his honor. That's what we are coming into. That's the inheritance that he was set up for his children. That's what he wanted. Children to give an inheritance to. He demonstrated that with Abraham. All of this is a demonstration of Yahweh's thought processes and what he, you understand, conceived within himself. That's what we're looking at. That's what's going on down here. If you could just see the magnificence and the majesty and the power of to have all these things going on from the microscopic all the way up to the totality of the uh, most perfect and greater universe sitting off in here with all these things working in harmony. The planets are not bumping into one another, you understand? The seasons are going right along like they're supposed to, you see? Everything is in harmony. And he worked it all out before he set it in motion or created it. That's the power, that's the wisdom, that's the intelligence of this Yahweh that we are talking about. And what we're doing, because of the knowledge that he's given us, we're glorifying him. That's what we're doing. We're glorifying and honoring Yahweh for being who and what he is, and he deserves it. Every bit of it and then some. So there ain't none like him, and there ain't no way possible for anything to be created like him. All right. <clears throat> I don't got worked up now. I'm, I'm going to let it go. But I enjoyed it, folks. I hope y'all got something out of this. Uh, I got to learn to be a little bit more calmer. You done? I'm done, baby. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Again, we thank everybody for their testimonies tonight. We really, really enjoyed it. Thank you guys for joining us tonight on our Zoom class. Thank you guys for joining us on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Um, before we conclude, are there any questions or comments? I have to give YouTube a minute because um, there's a lag with YouTube. Are there any questions or comments? Uh -oh. I say just keep the faith, folks, because things going to get rough <clears throat> down toward this election. Uh, it's going to get really rough. Uh, so you need to be on your, on, your, on your toes, and you need to be in the Messiah, just like uh, uh, Noah and his family had to be in that ark before Yahweh unleashed his wrath on that world back there. So we're going to have to be in the Messiah, because things going to get rough out here. Now he's already demonstrated that with the with the uh, military police or the military. I say the military. Hell, I don't know what they are. 
in those uniforms, camouflage uniform masks over their face. You don't know who they are. They could be Ku Klux as far as we know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he came out there in the city. So this is, I don't know if y'all remember back when uh, uh, all these police organizations was buying up these military stuff, riding around in the Humvee with machine guns set at the top. Right. <laughs> So they have all this kind of equipment and stuff, and they can just ran to use it. You understand? Because they're afraid of the black and brown people. This is see, this is the Pharaoh syndrome that I call it. The Pharaoh fears of another nation went to war with him that the Israel was join the forces with him and overthrow his kingdom. That's what the That's fear right. is in this country. That's right. They think the black and brown folks are gonna overtake them and the, I guess put the white folks in bondage or whatever they think. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Right. They're yeah. Right. over. And they're doing okay. everything they can to stop it. They make no difference about no constitution. They don't care about no doggone constitution. That's right. They worried about keeping their livelihood, or what they think is their livelihood. You see, <clears throat> but they don't understand who's running the show. Just like y'all would have Pharaoh doing what they was doing, he got them doing what they're doing now. That's right. So all we got to do is sit back and watch y'all would do what do to unfold his purpose. Just watch the show. Mm -hmm. out of the way don't get caught up in this world's affairs be vigilant mm -hmm. sorry about that all right any other questions or comments Carl, I just want to say that uh, the Hebrews at 11th chapter, I'm, I'm where you are, that it did jump out a little different to me tonight. Yeah, it, yeah. Very, it hit uh, different. Yeah, yeah, it hit real different tonight. It did. It hit I, different. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, oh, it says that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> that's what we've been talking about. Yeah, it hit real different tonight. It did, um, yeah. Yep. All right. I enjoyed it again, everybody. These are the announcements, same announcements that we always have. Wednesday nights, uh, we have, well, Wednesday afternoons, we have the Dr. Kenley transcript readings that we're reading in chronological order. The time is on the screen. Um, Thursday, the basics and foundation class, the time is on the screen. Uh, same thing for Friday night, uh, Meridian class sessions, the time is on the screen. We stream that live on YouTube. Um, Saturday, the youth session, the time is on the screen. Also for Sunday, we're not having the conference call anymore moving forward. We're doing that via Zoom and live streaming it on YouTube. We do have questions that we will be asking um, the panel on Sunday. Um, and there was a couple of questions that were sent in from different brethren, I think two weeks ago, that those questions will be answered as well. And so we look forward to that. If anybody has any other questions that they want to send to ask the panel to be um, answered, uh, you can send it to idmrmeridianms at gmail.com. The email address is on the screen. And the three Zoom classes that are on the right-hand side of the screen will be announced shortly as the time and dates for those sessions. If there's nothing else, we're going to go ahead and conclude with the doxology. The doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.